And that is the last of it. Oh, no, there's one last patch down here. Look, it's not going to be enough, but we are only 10% shy of another bale. So let's lift that up. And we're just going to go and drop this off and go and cut the grass on field five. Uh, because if we can do that and uh, and get another couple of bales, because if it completes this one and gives us another bale off there, that would be great. <laughs> Hello and welcome along and welcome back to the old stream farm. Today we've got a few bits to do in preparation for getting ready to plant the new grapevines. We're going to get the wool out of here um, because tomorrow as well is the best day to sell wool. So I want to keep uh, piling this up, preparing to take it out. Let's just check the level of my forks here oh, a little bit lower a little bit higher can be a little bit tricky to get the forks just right but that seems to have got it and trying not to hit the doorway uh so yeah we've got a couple of new pallets of uh wool which is great in fact we've got another half a pallet uh nearly done so we're aiming to have 25 pallets in time for selling it to the spinnery next game day uh which should be absolutely fine i think we're i think we're gonna hit that uh actually 24 i think we are after 20 actually thinking about it love how close we can get this in here and then just do that this is just a fantastic piece of kit this jcb right and that ladder there and in and on perfect uh so yeah the wool is all going to be going next time so that's perfect uh we've got eighty thousand, which is about enough i've worked out to build half the grapevines we want to build so ideally we need to get hold of another eighty thousand. we can't borrow that money and um well all the money we're going to earn from this wool from selling this that is going back into buying the spinnery so, yeah, that isn't going to be much help. We can get about an extra 10,000, about an extra rose worth of uh, money for the vines from the lettuce we've got. So, we're going to load up the lettuce we have today and get that sold as well. Uh, that will bring us in some extra cash too. So, that's really useful. And the other thing I want to do is we've got the mowers and everything i think we might try and uh create some more hay today in the remains or the bits of the uh cow meadow we've got that currently aren't or currently don't have any vines on them i think would be really useful to have those uh turned into uh into hay and go from there so this whole area here we have i think we can cut this uh bale it we could make hay bales from it but i'd really like to make silage bales from it the trouble i've got is that the cost of something to wrap looking at the bale wrapper here to lease this would i well actually would easily be covered by the price of a bale so maybe that's what we want to do we want to uh lease that today uh get the grass we've got around the farm cut and baled up and then we'll be in a position to uh, make a, uh, a decent amount of money from that might even squeeze a few more hay bales uh sorry a few more rows of vines out of that so in that case what we're going to do is we're going to grab the vulture we haven't actually used this tractor since we bought it yet so a uh, perfect opportunity to get this running and going and we're gonna put our mower on the back now this mower should have the ability to get it to straight up windrow so save ourselves a bit of time let's see if we can't take this mower into our workshop and get this updated or upgraded Again, worth spending a little bit of money on this. Uh, we should get a decent amount, as I said, for any silage bales and stuff we have. 
Now, a lot of people didn't realize that we've got this workshop here. And in fact, in the whole time of this series, this is the first time we've used it. So, uh, swath plate. There we go. Uh, oh, wow. It costs nothing to add the swath plate. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, let's customize that. Yes. Okay. Uh, then we'll reconnect it up. No, uh, like that. Right, and we can get cutting with this. This little tractor, I think, might have enough horsepower for us to get a front mower as well. This particular mower uh, has a power requirement of just 60 horsepower. For us to get a little uh, front mower to go on, uh, so probably something like the little set here. Uh, this only has a 40 horsepower requirement and that tractor well above that 110 horsepower. So yeah, we'd have 10 horsepower to spare. Uh, so that would work pretty, pretty perfectly for us actually. Right. I am going to go around and cut my headlands. Uh, I want to cut the areas around my grapevines as well. Uh, the other thing we got coming up, of course, on our existing grapevines is we need to do the uh, we need to do the the mulching and the cultivating. So we've got that to do as well in the next couple of days. Oh, I could have gone the other way. Right. Actually, we will. We'll go the other way first, and then we'll be able to cut in and round. So, unfold you. Bring this here, like so. And we'll cut right up to the edge. So, turn it on, drop it down. And this is set up to swath, so we should immediately be able to bale this up, uh, which will be great. will save us a whole load of time. If that, it's quite tight at the end of this field. I'm not sure. I, I, I think I might have put uh, these vines a little bit close at this end here. I'm not sure if I can delete off a single section of vines, though. I have a horrible feeling it would delete the whole row. And, uh, and that would be a big problem if we went to do that. All right, let's just cut along the end here. And we're going to do this at uh, on our other uh, vines as well at the front of the farm in field five. Uh, because that makes sense to do. Right, there we go. And now I want to cut down the side of the vines over here. And then we can work our way into the field. And uh, after we've done this, we can roll it and uh, it will give a full set of fertilization to this field, uh, which is perfect because then we can plant vines straight into it and have this field fully fertilized. We have a huge amount more space at this end of the field. Wow. That's why I found it so much easier to turn around with my harvester. Because, yeah, this is just worlds different with the amount of space i can fit my mower down here at least twice in fact there's some extra space at the end uh which yeah we'll uh we'll need to get the mower to run along that end again so it's worlds away from the amount of space that we've got at the other end and it may even get wider as it goes down here i'm not 100 percent sure that may just be how i've cut that Right, and then we've got a much squarer part of the field now, and I can get this finished off. This little Vultra is perfect for this job. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, it is just sailing through it, and we are creating a decent amount, actually. No idea exactly how much, but uh, it's handling this mower fine it's well within its power limits uh this little mower so i'm not surprised it's handling it uh, fairly well uh there is a section of grass you can see at the end of the vines there uh, i'm not going to be cutting that simply because uh it is just too fiddly to get in there with the uh well with the baler 
and the wrapper if we were to end up dropping a bale down there. So I want to keep things fairly open and easy for me. Uh, what I am thinking of doing is possibly plowing up some areas here and creating a new grass uh, area in our main yard. Just sort of reusing that space a little bit better down this bottom end uh, would certainly do fairly well for us. And just, yeah, just sort of using the, the yard in a better way than we are now. There's no small fields or anything I'm looking at and going, oh, I should, you know, I should use that area or that's a bit too fiddly to get the vines in. Um, we'll uh, we'll use that for, for grass instead. So as a result, I, I think that this sort of this area we have around the yard at this end here would be a good place to do otherwise we're talking about putting productions in there uh something like that maybe um might be a good place actually for the greenhouses and have a grassy area in the lower part of the yard there but i'm not sure that that would work either way um anyway i look at it though i think we're not fully using our yard to the full advantage yet so we need to take a look at that at some point and rework that i've been saying that for a couple of episodes now and people have rightly pointed out at the moment we don't have the money to do that uh planting grass wouldn't be so difficult other than needing to get a plow to do that bit and uh, and to create the new land but now we have got our grass cut we need to get the baler out. Oh, getting the baler into that end is going to be tricky. Let's drop this off. Uh, goes at the end over there. I think I need to unfold it to get it under the roof. Yeah, there we go. Right. And then down. And we can unhook it. Yeah, this little tractor works brilliantly. It's going to be absolutely wonderful for what we want to do on here. Right, Baylor is next. And this is the thing. Whereas the other tractor was having trouble with this Baylor, uh, this Baylor is going to be perfect for us on this uh, on this Vultra. Oh, it will also do well on that roller. So we, uh, we had some struggles with the roller as well. So I'm quite happy with that. I don't think I can get it on the subsoiler. I don't think it will get close enough to the vines if I put the uh, subsoiler on it. And this should immediately change it to grass. It does. And yeah, we're going to have to reverse this into here, I think, to, uh, to get this to work. Otherwise, wow, we could do with smoothing this out a bit, maybe. Good to see that we've got a pretty much got a bale already. I mean, we had half a bale before we started, but uh, that is going to produce us a nice grass bale nice and early. This tractor works so much better on this baler. It's it's absolutely ridiculous how much uh, how much better the whole thing's going uh, using a slightly bigger tractor for this. I'm I'm really happy with this. This was a very good purchase. I mean, it's got 30 hours on it, so it's not uh, overly cheap to run. But uh, it definitely is uh, better than when we were running with the tract methane tractor. We could have possibly continued with the tract methane one and replaced uh, our little one from the... Ooh, um antonio carrera pack with uh this uh but i think having the uh the the tractor we got from uh the antonio carrera is is the better way to go i think where we'll probably go uh with the kubota pack is to try and replace the antonio carrera tractor with a kubota tractor and run two small but uh slightly larger tractors on this farm uh, as we look to expand out and as we look to uh, to, to make things bigger, 
Uh, I think it's certainly going to be more useful to us to go that way. Uh, especially if we're able to get between the vines with this. Uh, the sprayer that I want to get and I want to try out uh, to fertilize the vines this year uh, is going to require a bit more horsepower as well. Let's see. Uh, there we go. 100%. So that's going to be something that's going to require uh, a little bit more care. And, and hopefully I've got enough space, especially on these vines over here, to deal with that. Right. Uh, is that picking up again? Yes, that is. Good. So we've got five rows to go. And I think we've already got five bales. Our final full row of grass on here, and we've got a decent number of bales off. Uh, I think it's worked out pretty well for us. There's a few bits and pieces to pick up around the field. Uh, there's the odd mist patch. So I'm going to go around and grab those. We're 78% full. So there is a possibility it could... Give us enough to give us one more bale. If not, it's not a huge problem. Um, what, we've got two, four, five, six, seven bales off here. Uh, it would be nice to get an eighth and uh, make sure that we get a decent number off here. And make a decent amount of money from them. Again, this is probably worth another entire row's worth of vines on to uh, this field so yeah getting this right and getting the most we can out of here will really pay off it doesn't look like there's enough however i do need to cut around that field there field five we've got the ends that could do with cutting so we might go and just run them around that see if we can get another bales worth off there i think we probably can and then i don't think up at the top we've got a lot of space the wow it is beeping though the vines at the at the top very much go up to the ends of the rows so or, or up to the edges of the fields with no real space for us to uh go and do some extra um grass around the ends so that's not really an issue or not really a possibility there that that's lifted that's why i missed that first bit oh trying to get up these last few bits is always quite a pain and that is the last of it oh no there's one last patch down here look it's not going to be enough but we are only 10% shy of another bale. So let's lift that up. And we're just going to go and drop this off and go and cut the grass on field five. Uh, because if we can do that and uh, and get another couple of bales. Because if it completes this one and gives us another bale off there, that would be great. So let's drop all of that off. And then we can bring this round here. I think I might start separating some of our equipment. We've got, well, it's it's getting quite busy in this shed. In so far as it's a bit difficult to uh, to move everything and place everything, so I think I might have to do that. I don't know if we own that patch of grass over there as well. That would be good if we do. Yeah, the, the patch of grass to the side of field eight. If we own that, uh, we might be able to cut that as well. The grass here is a little bit spotty. It's not the best seeding uh, job I've ever done. But it was just kind of trying to make up the ends of this. So we could probably turn it more to uh, side grass. Right, there we go. But it, it does give us that extra little bit, should we want it. There we are. That cut up there. I don't think I need to worry about rolling all of this grass. Uh, this is this is more just something we want to do occasionally. 
Uh, running the baler up and down here, probably a good idea, but... Is that going to get all of it? Uh, just about, actually. I'm fairly happy with that. That is a good enough cut for this end of the field. And then we're going to go and do the same at the other end. So lift and turn off. And then we'll go round the end here. And it's about two swathes or, or two mowers width that we want to leave at the end of one of these fields then by the looks of things. I think we might go a little bit shorter uh, on the rest of that field then just to make things easier on ourselves overall. Lift that up and turn. And yeah, that's a good distance for us to, to have to turn around at the end. So down. We could actually shift those a little bit. And they are might test and see if I can delete just a section off the vines. Uh, see whether we get any money back for doing that or uh, whether that will just cause us to lose an entire set of vines. Because uh, that would be bad. I don't think you can extend them either. Okay, back with my baler down and that's going to fill up fairly quickly. But that doesn't, oh, that doesn't look good for getting another bale out of here, I don't think. We'll give it a go, though. I think it might get quite close. Close that up. And round we go. I did make things a little bit tight up this, this end to try and get this all bailed in. A little bit of careful manoeuvring and hopefully we won't go into the stream. There we are. And then turn. Will we get the whole end? No, we won't. So we'll have to back up. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see if we get another bail out of here. Interestingly, this field here... Field 5 has yet to uh, be ready to cultivate. So I think what we might end up... Uh, well, I think we need to wait until all of our fields are ready to cultivate uh, and mulch. Uh, and I think that might be happening because of when they were planted, interestingly enough. So, yeah, we'll, we'll wait till that grows up a bit. We might have to... Oh, wow. 86%. So, yeah, we basically got a single bale off the ends. That's really interesting. Um, I think we might end up uh, having to wait until this is all grown up and ready to, to actually do. It's not going to be enough to finish this row, but it's a little bit more. There we go. So one bale off there sitting at the other end. We would, I think we'd have been just under a single bale cutting those ends. We'll go and park this up and then uh, I think we're going to have to head up to the shop and see if we can hire a bale wrapper for a little bit uh, in order to get these bales wrapped. Now, as I said before, this is going to cost us about £1,200 in order to lease this bale wrapper. Uh, as a result, it will eat into uh, the overall money we have slightly. Uh, I've worked it out it's about 75000 for five rows worth of vines. So uh, we've got a little bit to spend anyway. Nothing in the shop, so that's fine. Let's go bale wrappers. I'm going to lease this one. Uh, wrapper design standard. Uh, I think we'll take... We're gonna, probably going to spike these to load them, but we'll take, we'll take it with the end on Turner. Uh, and I think we'll go with the green bales. Uh, no number plate because this is leased. And, yep, I think that will do us very nicely for this job. Uh, leasing that will cost us... Oh, no, 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 no. We want to keep the price down. Let's take the end on turner off. Lease that. 
1,122. Yes. Okay. And we'll easily make that from at least one bale. So that means that we should be in a good place uh, to make a decent amount of money off the eight bales that we have done. I am going to be keeping my eye out for some baling contracts this year. If we can get all of our stuff done with our grapevines early on, uh, then that would be great. Uh, because we're then able to get any grass contracts that come up and any harvesting contracts that come up um, fairly early on. So, uh, let's get this back down to the farm and start getting some bales wrapped. First bale I pick up is actually going to be the last one I baled. I'm going to grab this one here because it's going to be a little bit fiddly to do. So unfold this. Especially as we're probably going to have to reverse out of here. There we go. So reverse out of here with this. And then we can just transport this into the yard. I think I'm going to put these to the side of field uh of uh our former cow meadow that shed there is actually quite low on that overhang you need to to drive in from either side right uh now do i put them in here or i think the way i'm gonna have to do it is drive around and then just put a line of them along here like so or oh, actually no 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 i know i'm gonna do it we're going to put them against the wall because we're going to come in from the end with the JCB to grab them. So that will work out better. And then we can just unload like that. And hopefully <clears throat> that will sit against the wall there and make it easier for us to get the rest of these picked up. Perfect. And if I can do them two by two like this. That will make it really easy to pick them up. So that's how we want to do it. And then uh, they should go really easily onto the trailer as well. So, uh, yeah, that will work out best for us. We've got uh, one more down the far end, two more in the middle, and uh, the one that we're wrapping now. Our final bale. Just need to squeeze it in here to pick it up. Load it in. There we go. And then that is all eight bales nicely placed here, ready to get picked up by our JCB from the side. Uh, yeah, that's going to make really easy access to those bales, which is perfect. Um, and means that we've cleared the field off and we'll be ready. That's got it. Uh, we'll be ready to get this rolled, I think. Let's fold this up, and I think that can be returned now. We don't want that kicking around for any longer than we need it to. So just disconnect that off and get it returned. We only had eight bales, so easy enough to get rid of that. Uh, return that, yes. Didn't realize we rented this trailer as well. I don't think there's anything in it at the moment, is there? No, so that can go back. We don't need that either. Let's head in here. Select. Uh, return that. Yes, please. Okay. Right. Perfect. Uh, now we just need to hook up to the roller. And uh, I'm only going to roll the main part of this field. We don't need to be any more precise than that. Because it's just, yeah, not a big enough field to do that with. What's going on there? Are you not going to connect up to this roller? Wow. Okay. Back a little further. Are you not capable of connecting up to this roller? Now that is odd. That is not a problem I expected to have. All right. That's fine. It will connect up to the other tractor. But it's, uh, yeah, that's a little bit weird. We'll have to put the roller on the... Uh, on the little tractor and connect it up there. But that is very odd. Start her up. Let's see if uh, this is going to work. If not, I think we may have a, uh, a keyboard uh, 
selection problem. But that's all right. We'll find out soon enough. If this hooks up, we know all is okay. If it doesn't, well, no, because we've hooked up other stuff. So this should be absolutely fine. Wonder why the... Uh... Yeah, there we go. I wonder why that wouldn't hook up to the other tractor. So, okay, we might as well get the uh, the TFG 10900 out and give it a spin today. I mean, after all, its main job has now been taken, or one of its main jobs has now been taken by the Vulture. This is not the fastest of jobs with this little roller, but it does at least uh, get the job done and it wasn't overly expensive. And to be perfectly honest, we're not looking at having a large area of grass like this for much longer. Uh, the question I really have is where we go from here. Uh, we are expanding out each year. We've got, you know, more and more vines going down and we're filling up the space we have with more and more vines each year. Uh, but, you know, do we continue to put more vines in uh for example, if we bought field four and uh, or field two or three, I think field six is absolutely somewhere where I'm targeting. Uh, I want to extend field five into it. I really want to know if it's possible to extend a set of vines, to be honest. Um, because if I can do that, then I can buy field six, square off the vines on field five, field five and use the rest of field six as a, a really useful area for us to maybe put a bit of grass down and uh, and make sure we always have enough feed for the sheep or possibly even put just a small field of wheat or something like that down because the biggest struggle we have on here at the moment is keeping the chickens fed um we we don't have an arable side to the farm beyond the grapes and as a result we're very reliant on a contract coming up that might have some, uh, you know, th that might be something that we can feed the sheep, whether that's wheat or barley or uh, sorghum or I think those are the main ones. Yeah, wheat, barley, sorghum. You know, we, we want to be able to get uh, the sheep fed on a regular basis. And at the moment, we don't have that in. We have to, to go and buy the chicken feed, which is always really expensive. Our final row, and this should ensure that we're now planting our new vines into fully fertilized soil. Should give us a nice, easy boost uh, for the first year. So we want to keep an eye on that. Oh, a little bit off the end here. Let's get it right up to the side of the existing vines. Uh, and as I said, we have about enough money to get five rows of vines planted uh with the silage bales we've done that should take us up to six i mean what is the best price for silage bales or when is the best price for silage uh i think no, that's planting we want this here we go best price for silage uh is it's on the way up but uh, oh, we are we are heading to a low. In fact, by the time we're looking to sell in May, we'll we'll be uh, fairly low. Um, but it's at three twenty five at the moment, uh, which is actually fairly high. Uh, in May, it's looking at, at being maybe about three hundred ish per thousand liters, and I think our bales hold about three and a half thousand liters. So we're looking, yeah, we're looking at about uh, three, th um, uh, about a thousand pound a bale, which will be good. That will give us uh, a, a nice big boost, should give us uh, about another half a row maybe off there, which is great. Right, there is only one other thing I want to do today before we finish. And that is get the last or the, the few bits of lettuce that we have up at the top. Uh, we want to get those sold. So we're going to hop in our JCB, get the landy up there with the trailer. And it's only about five uh, pallets. We may have six now. Um, but 
Uh, they will give us a nice little bit of extra cash for when we go to sell the uh, wool tomorrow. There's a lot more lettuce here than I thought there'd be. We've already got, well, over half a trailer full here. Uh, there's still a fair few left beside the greenhouses. Uh, we are going to get all of this loaded up and sold. Uh, it's just going to take me a little bit of time and it'll probably be fairly dark by the time we're finished. But getting these in uh, today when the price is still fairly decent uh, is going to be a good time to do it. And then next time we can fully just concentrate on getting the wool sold and the new vines planted and go from there. The final pallet of lettuce on we come to reverse it out and then we can get round here oh look at that it is it is the perfect amount we have exactly one trailer's worth of lettuce to go here uh it's going to be a fairly late di night delivery to either the farm shop or the restaurant whichever is more wanting of these right now oh no, there is another one there any other rings i've missed no so that's perfect I'm just going to put the teletruck over here uh, and then i can sort that out later once we're all done oh let's turn its lights off as well and yeah, time to go and get these sold to finish things off. Wow, that's dark. And it's the farmer's market that wants it. So we're just going to pull in here to sell it off like so. Make sure everything is in. Front one's still selling. No, that front one isn't quite selling. Just get that in there. Yep, yeah, that's all going and then we've got the bit at the front there and there we go decent price i think another five thousand on top uh, i don't know how much we've sold in total today on that we'll have a quick look at that i think there we go and undo all our straps so uh how much have we sold today Let's go into here and have a look. We made 17,000 in sold products. And the only thing we've sold today is the lettuce. So that's brilliant. So that's, uh, yeah, another 15,800 uh, made today in total uh, because we obviously spent money on leasing. Um, and we got our normal outgoings. But yeah, that is all good and really great. So that's probably added another row or two onto our vines for tomorrow, which is brilliant. Really happy with that. Um, and that is going to be what we do next time. We've got wool to sell and we've got the spinnery to buy. We've got vines to plant. And so later this week, the farm is going to be expanding again. For now, though, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live, and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.